that one minute or two minute build up to the start of the heat, there's a lot of things happening in the head. And literally when I get done with my gardening at the starting line and I get staged ready for the green light, it goes quiet. And when I'm in that zone, then I know who's gonna be second. Greg Hancock is one of the greatest speedway riders of all time. The 46-year-old has been competing at the sport's top level for over a quarter of a century. And last year, he won his fourth world title. Greg is based in Sweden during the speedway season, where he races for Swedish and Polish clubs, in addition to competing in the Sports World Championship Speedway Grand Prix. But Hancock originally hails from the USA. We caught up with him at his home in Southern California, where the rider known as Grin took us on a trip down memory lane on his skateboard. This goes way back. This is where I spent a lot of my childhood here on Balboa Island in uh, Newport Beach. And uh, we lived on Onyx Avenue and I spent a lot of time racing around here on my skateboard, on my bicycle, sliding around in the alleys with the dirt and the sand. And we had the beach, we had the speedway, we had a lifestyle that's, for me, has just been uh, second to none. So much of our childhood here on Balboa Island was about ripping around on skateboards and BMX bikes and terrorizing where uh, today we're not really supposed to be on the boardwalk on a skateboard, but uh, just wanted to reminisce. Hancock's racing career began at Costa Mesa Speedway, some 70 kilometers south of Los Angeles. His father brought him here to watch races from the age of five. Four years later, in 1979, Greg made his on-track debut. I remember it like yesterday, more than I can remember the rest of my career, the, those early days. And uh, nine years old, coming out here, and the nerves, the, the excitement, the scaredness, everything. That first race was the, was the greatest, and it was the beginning of, of a career that I never thought would take me this far, and I'm still living the dream. We got to hang around with all these top guys back in the day. They created the sport. They were household names, and they were, they were the ones that uh, went off to Europe. They became very successful. They would come back, and I'd see how they improved, how good they were, how much the crowd loved them, and I just knew that I want to be like that. The outstanding rider of that era was Bruce Pennell. The quintessential California kid, Pennell won world titles in 1981 and 82, before embarking on a career as an actor in films and television. The first time Bruce Pennell won the world championship, I just remember like the, the media and the hype that went around this guy who was a guy I, I thought was the bomb. Uh, I want to be like that. And that's, that's kind of, I was 11, 12 years old in those two, first two years when he won. And I just remember like, that's what I want to do. And all played a pivotal role in Hancock's development, as in 1988, he arranged for Greg and fellow rising star Billy Hamill to travel to England for a trial with Cradley Heath, the English club he'd raced for. Oh, yeah. Bruce and Greg have remained firm friends to this day. Having moved on from the acting profession, Pennell now manages a concrete cutting company in California but retains a strong interest in Speedway and has closely followed Greg's career. I remember saying this to a reporter that I thought that Billy would probably become champion first, but I said that Greg would always have the longevity. He's such a smart racer and he's such a thinker, you know, but the biggest thing is it's, it's heart. And you have to have heart and you have to have the will and the want to be successful and he has every single one of those pieces of puzzle put together, and that's quite obvious. The year after his trial with Cradley Heath, Greg was offered a contract to ride for the club, and Julie made the journey from sunny California to the English Midlands. It was a huge culture shock. I mean, going there for, for two weeks for a vacation and, and feeling out the sport and getting a, 
an idea how it works was one thing, but suddenly going there and saying, this is my home for the next six months, and if I don't score any points at the end of the week, am I gonna have enough money to buy food and wash my clothes and get gas to go to the races? And so I grew, I grew in from a boy to a man really fast, you know. Greg was a big hit with the heathens and also helped the USA win the World Team Cup in 1992 and 93. A first individual world title followed in 1997. But Hancock suffered a disappointing campaign in 98 and would have to wait a further 13 years before achieving his second championship success. It was just one of those slaps in the face, like, Okay, everybody that was there to help you and build you up, boy, they were ripping you apart the year after, like <laughs> showing you what it's, you know, this is reality. And um, I, I spent all those years trying to be better and I was experimenting and trying new things and I think I just lost myself. I wanted to win, but I was just making mistakes and little things were going wrong. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't find my feet. The tapes go up. Speedway bikes are light, powerful machines that can reach 100 kilometers per hour in just three seconds. There are no brakes, so precise and predictable handling is all important. In 2010, Greg began working with English engineering firm ProDrive, a move which transformed his fortunes. They came up with a... Uh a chassis change that was literally career changing for me. The first time I rode it, I went out on the track, and when I came in, I said to my mechanics right away, I can win the world championship on this. The following year, Hancock romped to his second world title, winning four of the 11 Grand Prix and finishing 40 points clear of his nearest rival. We Greg switched his bike development operation to Coast Fabrication near his California home in 2013. You gotta keep these guys guessing all the time. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Jeff Haywood's six decades of motorsport experience helped Hancock secure the world title that year and again in 2016. Yeah. The more times I come here, the more times I leave here with a winning mind. I can come in here with a lot of questions and whether doesn't matter what it is, just talking to a guy like this who I highly respect from his racing career as much as what he's done. He's been very, very, very influential and uh, uh, a key part of my success these last three years. Another element that's been a big part of Hancock's career is his association with Troy Lee. The pair have known each other since childhood, and whilst Greg pursued his speedway ambitions, Troy combined his love of art and motorcycling and founded Troy Lee Designs. He's been customizing helmets for some of motorsport's biggest stars for over 30 years, and has provided sponsorship for Greg throughout his career. Troy's an artist, and, and uh, you can see the, the empire that he's built here from his artistic skills. He's a great motorcycle rider as well, but growing up through the years and watching what he did with his helmet designs and then uh, on into visors, and, and now he's got this great business, and you walk in here and it's not hard to get inspired if you're into bikes, if you're into, well, just anything with color and artistic uh, ideas or inspiration, so um, I love coming here. I walk away with something new every time, and and uh, get a lot of great uh, support from Troy and this company. For all that he's achieved in Speedway, Greg has never won back-to-back -back world championships. To claim a fifth title, Hancock will need to outpace and outsmart one of the strongest ever Grand Prix lineups, comprised mainly of riders half his age. If I look at today's riders, you know, it's hard to put your finger on one particular guy. He, everyone can say that there's, there's somebody there that's probably the hardest or the toughest, but I've always, I learned at an early age that if you put your focus on one particular individual, you'll get steamrolled by about five or ten other ones. So I never, I know that guy's going to be good, I know that guy's going to be good, but those, there's five guys there who are capable of taking points from me on any given day. Hancock's three sons appear to have inherited their dad's affinity with biking. 
His eldest, Wilbur, is already enjoying success in junior speedway events around California. Middle son, Bill, has mastered the art of drifting his trike, whilst the youngest, Carl, is just beginning his life on two wheels. Although the next generation of riders is hot on his heels, Hancock's still very much the man to beat. Over the next few years, he has every chance of adding to his haul of titles before stepping away from Speedway for good. The honest truth of it is that I love it. And uh, of course, you, I think about it all the time. What am I going to do when I'm done racing? And that, that scares me. Because it's, I've, I've been racing and this has been my lifelong dream and I'm still living the dream. That reality has to set in at some stage where you think, you know what, I, I, I can't do this at this level or, or maintain the, the competitiveness or, or whatever it takes to win, but I'm still in it, I'm still winning, I still want to win and I love it, so I want to keep doing it. But I don't know what I'm going to do exactly when I finish racing, but uh, you know, I have ideas and I have thoughts of things I want to do, and uh, we'll cross that when we get to it.